Hello guys, hope you're well. Today I've got a massive BF1 news drop and also my work in progress review of the three DLC maps that we've played so far in the They Shall Not Pass DLC. So then, big news first, the future of Battlefield 1. We had very vague ideas of what expansion packs would be released down the line for the game, but just now we've had a massive load of info dropped on this subject. The second DLC will be called in the name of the Tsar. Tsar being a term used to describe the Emperor of Russia. The description is as follows. Enter the war's biggest front with the Russian army and fight in the snow-covered ravines and a freezing archipelago in four new maps. Well, where to start with this one? Firstly, the addition of the Russian army is quite cool. We knew they were coming, but this is at least a confirmation of that. Secondly, snow maps. Currently, we have no snow maps in BF1, but I think they could be a fantastic addition. Look how cool the Hoth map looked in Battlefront and then imagine it in a BF1 World War I setting. And in Russia too, this just has to be good. And if the concept art is anything to go by, it already looks fantastic. Oh, and check that out. Is that a spear that the cavalry class is holding there? Sure looks like one to me. Ravines, snow maps, frozen islands, spears. Okay, I'm sold already. Next, we have Turning Tides, and this is an amphibious warfare DLC. Bringing BF1 to the seas much like we did in BF4's Naval Strike. The description says participate in the amphibious warfare of World War I and engage in the Daredevil Zeebrugger raid, the Gallipoli offensive and more. We can expect some real naval clashes in this DLC and from other info I found it suggests a seaplane. Interesting. The Zeebrugger raid was an attempt by the Royal Navy to block the Belgian port of Burger Zeebrugge and the concept art in the image looks a lot like a port and it looks pretty damn good if I might add. Lighthouses, heavy cannons, warehouses on fire, and perhaps a first look at that seaplane. I have to say, it does look pretty awesome. The fourth announced DLC is called Apocalypse, and it says, Go over the top in the most famous battles of World War I. Conquer bitterly contested ground with brutal tools and unique weapons. Never before have the nightmarish horrors of the Great War been closer as you descend into hell. Prepare to enter the Apocalypse. If that's not enough to give you nightmares, then I don't know what is. This one is the one that has the least info right now, which tends to be the case with the last DLC. They want to keep the lid on that until much nearer the time. We can of course speculate about what famous battles could be included and those unique weapons, what could they be? Some kind of crazy prototypes probably. Either way, it sounds pretty brutal, so I'm expecting some serious melee weapons in there for sure. So all in all, a nice little tease in that news post of what's to come in the DLC. And in the They Shall Not Pass DLC, three of the four new maps have now been tested on the community test environment, giving players the chance to check them out. And I've played enough over the weekend to be able to form an opinion on the maps that we've seen so far. Let's start with the first map that was tested, Soissons. This map is actually rather large, but playing it feels rather small. That's because there's a lot of map area around the capture points that won't necessarily be used all the time by infantry, but can definitely be utilised by armour and other vehicles. A lot of the infantry play will take place in the centre of the map around the village points. The B flag is central in the village and then the water mill sits over at A and then C sits around the trenches. All are in a good space for infantry to flow between them. You can use the central river that flows through the village as cover, especially as the water lowers and rises in some parts. Flag E is the chateau area which has large gardens either side, but overall the building is a familiar sight if you're used to playing something like Ballroom Blitz or Amiens. Finally, the D flag sits on top of the hill in the chapel ruins, and I think it's the point that needs a bit of work. The cap radius is very, very small, and it makes you a sitting duck for attacks from the air. In fact, a few of the flags could do with having their cap radiuses tweaked a little bit. I'm not sure the D flag really needs the radius to be so small. That being said, the battles that I've seen play out with between two teams trying to hold the ruins while one team pushes up to the hill from either the chateau or the trenches can be really spectacular and fun to take part in. On the flip side of that, you can always end up getting pushed from two different directions with very little in the way of cover. I have to also mention the armour on Soissons. On this map, each team gets four tanks. Combine that with the Behemoth, which also happens to be a massive tank, the Char 2C, and all of a sudden, you've got an overwhelming assortment of metal. Now, don't get me wrong, this is meant to be a heavy armour-based map, and I get that, but it has to have balance for fun gameplay, and I think that right now, there's a bit too much armour on the map. 
Just for a second, imagine that your team had four tanks of either the Assault or Heavy variant. That's up to 20 players from the battle on your team in tanks. That's not including players in other transport vehicles, planes and horses, and that's quite a lot I'd say. I think even dropping the armour down to three aside would make a big difference to the gameplay. Other than that, I think the map looks fantastic, something which we're used to seeing from DICE these days. There are some unique elements to it as well, like the water mill for instance, as well as the haystacks dotted around the fields, and the neat little tree houses that you can get up to as well. Other than that, lots of the buildings and props are very familiar, and sometimes when you're in, say, the Chateau flag, you may briefly forget that you're on a new map until you get outside again. And I feel the map does plenty to keep you engaged, and you know what, I've had some fantastic moments on it already. The next map that we got to look at was Fort Vaux, and I think people have already surmised from the description of this map that it was going to be similar or along the same lines as say something like Operation Lockers set in a fort underground. They've got a similar theme to them and they were right, but wrong at the same time in a way. The map has a feel of Operation Lockers to it, for sure. It's a fort after all and Lockers was a prison. They've got similar aesthetics, but Fort Vaux is much brighter and more importantly, way less linear, which is just so much better for gameplay. There are numerous routes here for you to take from each flag, and you never get pinned down in just one location like you would on Operation Lockers. Not to mention some of the flags do span outside as well, but not too far outside. C flag is called the breach, and it's very much outside covered by the debris of a blown up entrance to the fort. Surrounded by mud, dirt and trenches, it also loops around towards the barracks flag at D. B is the central courtyard, which is also outside in sort of an L shape. The last two flags are the ammo depot and the generator room the latter providing some nice new assets and a visual change to the rest of the level. Overall, I really like this map. It has a feeling of lockers while being much more open and brighter, and as such, it's an infantry player's dream. No vehicles, of course, on this map, and funnily enough, no behemoth either. Think about it, it can't have a warship, no water, it can't have a train, no train tracks, and well, it's inside a fort. Although I did toy with the idea of having a miniature train drive through the centre of the map using these small carriage tracks. Maybe that would be a bit too much though. It could technically have an airship, but few of the flags are outside and the majority is indoors, and it's got no anti-air on it either, so I think that's out of the question. The only other suggestion would be the new behemoth, which is the Char 2 Heavy. And again, it's a tank and most of the level is indoors, so that's a bit of a problem. So unless the tank just kind of roamed around flanking outside of the level, it just wouldn't work and that to be honest, doesn't sound that fun. And you know what, I'm perfectly fine having a map without a behemoth in BF1 if it suits the level design. In fact, there are probably some other levels that would also benefit from not having a behemoth. Lastly, and this has nothing to do with level design, there is a super secret door titled Isolation that if you go near it, you can hear the sounds of crying zombies. I dread to think of what's inside there. And the last map that we were able to try is Rupture, arguably the map that stands out the most visually because of the backdrop of the bright red poppies. You've got broken down rusty assault tanks that litter the battlefield and you can use them as cover and at times you'll find yourself a little distracted by the map, or at least I did. When you're in the poppy field just looking around you realise how nice the map actually looks. When you're in the bunkers at the A point and you look out over the poppy fields behind the point, it really does look fantastic. There are poppy areas all over the map as well and the colour really sets off what otherwise could be a reasonably generic map without them. That being said, some of the points also have a lot going for them. The A flag which we just talked about is mainly trenches, but over at D, Notre Dame Ridge, the flag is fantastic for infantry fights. Really wide trenches here offer brilliant infantry play, and I found myself drawn to this point a lot. There are lots of trenches on this map actually, especially near to the riverfront. You need to utilise these trenches to your advantage because there isn't a whole lot of cover down by the water. In fact, if you want to cross the river, I suggest going as far wide as possible because there tends to be a lot more cover there. The central bridge point often has enemies on top of it, and thanks to its design, players can also go underneath the bridge on the brick that's supports it. It can be destroyed as well and that offers you a one hit kill on the behemoth if you can time it correctly. And the B flag can be capped from underneath and on top. C and D are both smaller objectives based around farms. Opinions for Rupture? Well, much like Swasson, I had some great little infantry battles on this map, but again, I felt like there was some vehicle imbalance here. 
Air vehicles were extremely strong on this map, and I don't want them to be completely useless, but I felt that I was constantly being killed by bombers and attack planes over and over again. That of course could be attributed to a number of things, maybe there just aren't enough AA guns, or perhaps players aren't using them because they're focusing more on exploring the map for the first time, or doing weapon assignments. I think the main reason planes are so strong on this map is a lack of AA, and also because of the small cap radiuses on some points on the new maps, and it just makes those air vehicles feel way more prominent. I don't think that Rupture is a bad map, but in terms of the other two, I think that Swasson and Fort Vaux offer better gameplay at the moment. Now unfortunately, we won't get to see the fourth map for Dunn Heights in the CTE, we've got to wait for the DLC to release before we get our hands on that. And I'm really excited to see what that map has to offer and also how these maps are changed up when we get to play Frontlines and even Operations. Remember that right now we've only experienced them on Conquest and my thoughts are only on Conquest. Some of these maps could feel very, very different when other game modes are thrown into the mix. So there we go guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you did enjoy it, please leave a thumbs up, that would be absolutely fantastic. If you didn't like it, thumbs down and I'll see you in the next one.